Hello, Kainatis. Uh, as you remember, we uh, I was at New Mexico to observe sort of like one of the uh, Virgin Galactic flights that went on suborbital flight taking Namira Salim over there. One of the other astronauts that was with Namira was Ron Rosano, and I didn't get a chance to interview him over there, so I'm interviewing him now. Uh, hello, Ron. Hello, Salman. Sal Sal Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I thought, like, you know, uh, since I interviewed a couple of people over there, I mean, I'm just fascinated by people who are going up. So I'm just curious, how did you get interested in, like, you know, that you wanted to go into space? Oh, I've I've always wanted to go to space. You know, I've for as long as I can remember, I was been fascinated by the nighttime sky and the stars in in the in the night sky. And even at age six or seven, eight, you know, was curious about what's going on outside the planet, you know, outside the surface. And then I was nine years old when they landed on the moon for the first time and fascinated by Apollo and followed those missions and i can remember you know walking outside at, at night and looking up at the moon thinking and knowing that oh there's two guys walking around up there it it was you know an inspiration for the rest of my life to see that and then you know i followed the space shuttle missions you know very closely never thought i'd have the opportunity to go to space until 2004, when uh, the Spaceship One won the Ansari X Prize, and Richard Branson was there, and this on the on the on the day that it's uh, won the prize, and said, "I'm we're going to have a bigger version called Spaceship Two and take people to space." And I was like, "Wow, okay, this could be my chance." So I kept an eye on Galactic uh, for a few years and bought a bought a ticket with them in 2010, and was fortunate enough to get a seat assignment uh, in. Uh, earlier this year and it flew October 6th. Oh, this is actually interesting. I mean, oftentimes people say like, you know, that, hey, I got interested in space or astronomy because of Apollo program, but to actually say like, no, hey, and then you had a chance to actually go in a spaceship or sort of like, you know, uh, yeah. go in the atmosphere. That's an interesting connection in there. Yeah. So, yeah, but, uh, you know, advice to students, if you have a dream, stay with it. You know, and then... um, you know, I work do a lot of work with students, and you know, get asked often, "Gee, you know, how can I, you know, be an astronaut or or, or work in space?" And um, really, the best advice I've I've heard and can think of is, you know, find something you really love doing, uh, be ready to work really hard at being really good at it, and you never know what will happen. You'll find a place; a place will be there for you somewhere. You know, I don't think. Any of the people that have flown with Galactic or that are working for the company 20 years ago would have thought that, you know, we're doing what we're doing now or we've done what we've done now. You know, it's and I think it's that that landscape for spaceflight is changing even more now. There's more and more companies. There's a lot of technological advantages we didn't have 20 years ago. And, um, you know, I think I think anyone you know under age 40 will have the chance to go to space in their lifetime um at a at a, at a much more reasonable uh you know uh price than what's 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 happening now so uh, that that takes me out of the equation but, <laughs> but, but 60, I'm, 60, you know, I'm 63 so i think i think students in particular will have a chance to go way before they get to my age right <laughs> But uh, but I should I should mention that you also are a STEM educator and informal educator, and so you actually bring this experience to, to a certain degree to kids, especially and to others. Uh, and so, science is not just sort of like you know your passion for yourself, but actually you also uh, do science promotion as well. And so tell us a little bit about what do you do in that sense. Yeah, so I've been involved in a few programs. Uh, going back to 1995, doing classroom activities with students related to space and astronomy. Um, a lot of them uh, in person in classrooms here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, some outreach, a good amount of outreach through NASA's Solar System Ambassador Program. It's a volunteer program. There's thousands of ambassadors all over the U.S. that give presentations on NASA projects, talking about the James Webb Space Telescope or Mars rovers, 
or an eclipse of the sun or you know things like that and then um for the last 10 years i've been working with virgin galactic doing what we call space chats um we do q a sessions with classrooms all over the world uh, to talk about commercial space and what that means you know for the first time ever you know with blue origin and virgin galactic um people from all over the world can buy a ticket to go to space which is a big game changer it changes things enormously in that before this you had to work for a government a national space agency to be an astronaut uh, and you'd go to space only if you were a career astronaut so now for the first time people from all over the world are going to space or having it's not the same as going to orbit it's, it's suborbital it's a short duration but still you see the planet you have a sense of the planet in space and sharing the idea that we're on this planet together it's one planet it's a unique existence uh is really important to me and, it's, and i think it's important for for more and more people to know that i think that's one of the great things that'll come out of you know this commercial space travel and and so if i can sort of like you know as a, if you were to describe your experience in sort of like you know one thing that you would really say you know, this blew me away or this was something unexpected on your flight. Um, I mean, you had a, a few minutes, I think, of uh, weightlessness or, or sort of like, you know, a drop off uh, there mm -hmm. in New Mexico, uh, yeah. which happened in October. And now, actually, I mean, interestingly, I mean, you've had time to think about it. I mean, I, I, I mean, uh, right over there, there was one thing sort of like, you know, you have adrenaline inside and you are sort of like, you know, responding to it now. Yeah. that you've had some time to think about it what would it be what sticks out what has what aspect of that experience is with you now yeah um yeah it's it's it it sinks in and it changes a lot in different ways could i share a photo yeah absolutely yeah so here's here's an image that's a, a favorite and you know i look at this and what's striking to me is the you know thinking about that very thin blue line that you see the edge of the planet uh, next to the blackness of space and seeing our atmosphere like that is shocking and extraordinary you know that's our sky <laughs> and it's everything alive in that blue line everything alive on earth exists within that blue line and you don't get a sense of that from the ground you know you look at the sky and i think it goes on for a long way you know we were up and through the sky in less than a minute with the rocket burn and looking down on the planet you get a sense that it is a really unique existence and that we as humans alive on the planet are also a very unique existence and we need i think more and more people need to have a sense of that um i just realized you know week before last i'm not i'm looking out the sky and i'm not seeing the sky in the same way anymore mm. seeing the sky as a layer that has a boundary at the top where it ends and not as some kind of you know thing that goes on for a long period yeah but, so that's interesting and 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 i was also surprised like you know that yeah you do go to a place where the sky becomes dark right even though it's yeah. a middle of the day flight and i think that's interesting yeah, yeah. no you're beyond the sky <laughs> yeah. you're, you're in the blackness of space you're in you're you're in a in the vacuum of space where there's nothing for the light to hit so it's black and it's dark so, so can I ask one other question before we go? But I mean, I, I'm just uh, because it, it, it just occurred to me about so William Shatner, Captain Kirk. I mean, yeah, he yeah, went yeah. on Blue Origin and yep. he went up and he came back, and then he later on wrote. I'm, I'm, I'm sure probably you know about that. Like yes. you know that he well he found it a disturbing experience, right? I mean, yep. he says that he thought that this would be the most wonderful thing he'd always dreamed about yeah but then when he reflected on it 
It yeah. just scared him. Uh, can you say yeah, a little I've, bit about watched, that? Yeah. yeah, I've watched I watched that flight when they they did a webcast of it and that was a been a, a great moment to see him exit the capsule and have a very profound and transformative experience and the way he explained it was was beautiful um i've seen him talk about it some more since and you know he says he felt grief he felt sadness yeah. he was grieving for the planet because he had seen you know the effects that we humans have had on it and destruction in a lot of areas and changes to the planet caused you know by humans that have really been detrimonious to the planet that have really hurt the planet and he could see that that's life down there and then on the other side of the blue line in the blackness is death yeah and, and knowing that you're in a vacuum and there's no air there and you know that little layer of atmosphere protects everything alive on earth and you know you just don't have a sense of it on the ground you know there's not it's 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 not built into us like you need food water shelter sleep on a regular basis you don't need to be aware that you know we're on this planet but in the long term for the for the species yeah. to, to to remain for the earth to be healthy you have to have that awareness i think yeah and like you know that yeah you you need air as well but but to me that it was just the, the interesting part was that and you have talked about it as well about the overview effect that it transforms you in the so sort of like it transforms you in i mean and again I, I may not be doing justice or i may exaggerate but sort of like you no know, more bright side on more light side but to yeah. him the same thing actually went in the dark side because and and it's yeah. the same thing because but he's looking at it like look what have we done here on earth and that thin line that you also refer to yeah. for him it's like it became grief i'm just fascinated yeah. by that like yeah. you know that it's a similar type i mean and the emotion is strong in both cases yeah um yeah it's interesting and completely unexpected and that's yeah. part of the reason for going really is yeah. the unknown yes i'm curious to see what it's like from space and yes i want to have that experience so this work that i do with students can have more of an effect and you know be more personal but another good reason for going is that you don't really know you can't predict that he would have yeah. that reaction or that i'm feeling the way i'm feeling and you know as i talk to more and more people that have been on these commercial suborbital flights everyone's got you know a very different take you know chris boshausen flew on blue origin and he said he looked out the window and felt like he was drawn he was like being pulled into into the universe uh, jamila gilbert flew on uh virgin galactic and had a moment when she was getting ready to unbuckle and float away and she looked out the window and was just like stunned by the view and felt like the experience was coming to her saying you know come 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 see the view you know don't go do this other thing you're, <laughs> you're doing you know, you know, come, come see your earth. That is just so, uh, that is so interesting. Uh, and, and, and I guess that's the whole point, like, you know, that, uh, that it is impactful, yes. whatever way you go, yes. but I mean, it actually, yes. it hits you in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. It seems very less likely that someone would go fly and look at the earth and say, oh yeah, that was kind of nice. <laughs> Maybe go rafting this weekend or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One last thing. Uh, so a lot of the audience uh, for this is in South Asia. Uh, uh -huh. And and I found out that you have a connection to a group in Nepal. Yes. Is that, yes. So tell us tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. I mean, that's the right, same and then yeah, yeah, neck yeah, of the woods. Sure. Yeah, though there, there's, I've been, uh, uh, so I've been working with the Nepal Youth Foundation uh, for about as long as I've been doing classroom activities in uh, with related to space and astronomy, you know, going back to 1995. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's a great organization that does very impactful work across a, a number of areas, health, um, liberation of Kalmari, you know, young daughters sold into slavery, mm. uh, <clears throat> earthquake relief, um, child nutrition, uh, homes for or orphans or abandoned or, or at risk children, um, treatment of AIDS patients, um, started. So the foundation was NYF started by Olga Murray, who's uh, probably the most inspirational person I've ever met. Uh, she was trekking in Nepal and had an accident and hurt her leg and just fell in love with the people in the country and mm. initiative in her retirements to, to do more for the students. So yeah, Nepal youth foundation is, is, is a, does great work and if, if you're interested i encourage you to, to check them out yeah and i'll put a link uh hey, below you. the video yeah. as well yeah, that would be great course. i mean yeah, for sure uh, please and again i just love the connection between yes there is space and yes there is vastness of space but ultimately <laughs> it's also about the small things and about helping people here on earth i mean i think yeah. that's the connection yeah. that comes in yeah so uh, Ron, thank you so much for sharing this experience. Uh, I really yes. appreciate it. Yes, great to talk. Yeah.